Oh. Hi. How are you? Pretty good. How are you today? I'm a little cold. I have like, I know I have this like super cozy sweater on, but coming back from Mexico, it feels cold today. So I took I'm my sure. coat off this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm sure that's hard to come back from this, but. 80, sunshine, fresh air. Yeah, Jill was in here bragging about it earlier, so I kind of had to rub it in a little bit with the knife, what we missed, missed out on up here in this wonderful Minnesota weather, but it was better this last week than it was the weekend before, but still, I'm ready for some of this bitter cold to be done with. Oh, I'm, I don't even think about that yet, because I remember last year, the first day of spring, it was tons of snow still, so I right. just right. accept winter. Yeah, kind of have to living here. I know I remember going to like Twins Home Openers in April and be standing in snowbanks. So we're, we're not that lucky that it's going to be done just yet anyway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So let's see, catch me up. How's the last couple of weeks been? So far, so good. I've been staying pretty busy, I feel like. Um, last week was a little quieter. Um, I just didn't have any luck at getting any you know, the call leads, some of these guys yeah. are pretty quick. Um, and then the couple that, that, that came through that assigned were like some rental things and stuff. So I didn't, didn't have anything new. Um, and then I did have, uh, didn't have an open house last weekend either because I was going to do, um, the new listing of Tim's and it sold before oh. the weekend came. Yeah. So then I didn't, didn't have any of that going on on the weekend. Keep me busy either so I kind of kind of felt like the last the two weekends prior had been when I was busiest I had got a couple leads on the weekends I don't know if people are less on top of it or doing you know social things or whatever but I was able to get a few then and and then this last weekend without the open house um, and then my actually grandfather was in the hospital a little bit so um, I was visiting him so I know I missed a couple during that time. that's important though what you did your choices right. Right, right. So, yeah. otherwise, still liking it, staying busy. You know, the thing with you know open houses too is I tried for so many years to track it, to measure it, and I would come up with all these theories like, oh, it's snowy, it's the Super Bowl, it's this, it's that, and you just never knew. It's just one of those numbers things where you sometimes you get lucky and you have a couple of weekends like you did, and you feel like this is it. This is amazing. This is, I'm going to do this every weekend. And then for like four weeks, you can sit and have like nothing. And then it just comes again and it just doesn't seem like there's any rhyme or reason. Peter can probably speak to that too, right? In your five yeah. years, have you ever come up with any conclusions? I mean, I've tried times, everything, you know? I think sometimes at the beginning of the year, there's more unattached buyers than there are later in the season. Um, and obviously if there's lots of traffic, but everybody's got a realtor. You're helping your listing people out maybe, but you're not, you're helping those agents out, but you're not helping your own business. Right. And that's, right. I think that's almost the worst because if it's totally empty, you can do lead nurture, you can make phone calls, you can at least use the time for your business. But if somebody else's clients are there, you can't really be that agent and rudely be on the phone, but you're also not doing anything that moves things forward for yourself but you just have to balance I think how much time to spend on opens versus other types depending on what's going on right mm -hmm. and I think good questions to ask always are if they're under contract or if they've just looked with someone and not that that doesn't take a skill set to get somebody who isn't really happy because I think there's a lot of people too who feel loyalty to someone even if they're not happy who's just shown them houses so it's not easy. Like Peter said, and I think the biggest thing is, is just practicing. It's a great time when you're new to, to practice things that like, maybe you don't feel comfortable saying, and you know, they're not going to be your client. So I'm just going to wing it and ask this question or some of the things that we'll learn when we talk about go through Chris Voss again is like the cold read where instead of asking a question, you just uh, throw out there like, you know, it seems like you don't really like this house. And, and sometimes maybe it feels like, I, I don't know if I can just say that, or, you know, it seems mm -hmm. like, you guys are kind of just 
enjoy looking at houses and you're not really serious. Like if you thought you had an opportunity, that might be hard to say, but when you feel like you have nothing to lose, it's like good to practice it and just see what kind of experiences and answers you get. And you'll find like people, maybe they're a little taken back, but then they answer you and then you're like, wow, I never thought that like someone would, it would work and it does. So it's just. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Um, I think the I had talked to uh, Marsha and I was asking, you know, as far as like qualifying conversation in the last couple of weeks, did either of you have a chance to practice it with anybody or run through it? I did not. I did it with I did it with V. <laughs> and how did I it go? I was doing it in the way that you were telling us to do it. I was doing it in a way where um, I was telling her, I'm going to give all these top producer or people that are old to you and you're going to call them all and <laughs> see if there's anything there for me to do. And then some of our rental leads. And so she, then I was like, do you remember the qualifying conversation? And she was kind of like, uh, maybe. So then I was modeling how, how, how she'd use it specific to some of those types of old leads. And, and then she kind of stopped me. She's like, okay, I got it. What'd you talk? What'd you teach her? Um, so like with an old rental lead, starting with, hey, do you, you know, hey, do you have a couple of minutes for a business conversation? And you might not remember me, but we talked about rentals a couple months ago. And, you know, did you find something? Oh, yeah. Okay, well, um, you might not be thinking about it now, but sometime in the future, you might want to purchase a home and not be renting and not going through that process again. And then you know, we do help people with that process and we'd like to treat you like a past client. Now we'd like to get to know you so that when the time is right, that we'd be the one that you'd call and that you'd know more about that process when you got there. And is that something that'd be interesting to you and log it. Yep. Mm -hmm. Cause no one's, no one cares about renters until they actually indicate that they want a home. To buy. Yeah. Yeah. Until then they're like garbage. Like they can't get anyone to answer the phone. So like, mm -hmm. unlike a person that clicks on a Zillow lead and then maybe they're doing it in three areas. So now they have a couple different realtors chasing them. Um, yeah. The tenants can't get anybody to talk to them. So it's really unusual and sort of like, wow, someone wants to talk to me. Help me. Yeah. But mm -hmm. we wait long enough that they hopefully already found a place and don't try to rope us into showing them rentals. <laughs> that's important key. how about did you have any did you have any qualifying conversations with your list or where are you at with your 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 lots of list of people lots of lists of people yeah like all your contacts i know you haven't you don't have any everyone in the rp and you're kind of going through like top producer and then also just kind of all your i um Tuesday, I, I didn't see you, but uh, I was at the office all day yep. in Rochester. It's fun times. And um, so I did make it, I, there were some imports. One thing that was nagging at my side was that Jill did some imports for me. One of them was in November and one was like a couple weeks ago. And I hadn't been able to like get through them all yet to like put them into the tagging in different ways that we do on follow up boss. So I sat and I actually was in Rochester till 830. I was like getting stuff done. So I'm like, it's going to take me an hour and 20 minutes, no matter when I leave. So I'm just keep working. Um, yeah. So I got through all the old imports and I, Marsha and I talked about, you know, limiting the number of people that's actually in my group to follow up on. So I made some decisions about these are ones I'm going to follow up on. These are ones I'm going to give to be. And um, good. So I made decisions on all of them. So so, no, last week my focus was just getting to the event and <laughs> making it happen. So I had a lot of great RP conversations in person, which is great. There's um, some people I haven't seen in a really long time, but um, yeah, now we gotta hit the, hit the phones and then I've got a lot of leads from Zillow to keep up with. So juggling all of those. So you don't have a lack of opportunity for having the conversation or practice. No, I have a lot of opportunity. <laughs> Unending opportunity. Uh -huh. And your event went well? Yeah, it was awesome. We had 
I've, I've got to, I'll finish cleaning out my car today and have all my different tally sheets. I'm looking at pile that needs to make it to the office off here, but we had around a hundred people, about 80 climbers and um, enough food for everybody, but not too much. And um, people that lingered till the last moment slash like 30 minutes passed when they were supposed to be there. And um, yeah, one of the, one of my past clients brought relatives and they specifically asked about talking about buying a home and um, so we made plans to continue that conversation and yeah, there was a past client. They were like my third clients ever and we've kind of kept up together on Facebook, but I haven't seen them in probably five years and they brought their two little girls. And so it's like, yay. I had a client that, um, while I was on vacation, reached out, they, I haven't, I sold them a house. 11 it was 11 or 13 years ago and they never come to events i tried calling them i tried to do the rp with them and just could never reach them and i literally had kind of just given up like it was a lost cause right so many years ago we started really doing the rp and having these conversations three years ago so i just thought like well whatever and it was crazy because they reached out and it does it matters right like just like it's a funny you can have someone show up five years later 11 years later and they see it and you're there and they remember you and that's the biggest thing right is a lot of people don't remember who they worked with but they'd work with them again and it's just you know they, they all sudden feel like i'm gonna go to that event because we need petra now i i can show up and talk to her so that's awesome yep. matt did you go i did yeah, yeah, yeah that was another bonus yeah so yeah it was great great time and it was fun to Get up there and meet a few uh, that I, you know, haven't had an opportunity to connect with. I talked to Rick for quite a while too, and, and met me and, and all of them, and it was a great time. So yeah, my kids loved it. Yeah, it's, uh, it was a bonus. Yeah. That's so now you're gonna copy it and do it yourself, right? I, we, I was gonna say we'll have to do that. See, maybe even some of the people would want just to go to a different gym. I don't know how many people would come down, but maybe. Um, maybe that climbing community is kind of a strong knit group that a lot of those people are, do like to do things like that. If they're really in, I mean, mm -hmm. a lot of the people were maybe just there for, to do something different that they've never experienced before too. But um, yeah, it was fun. Yeah. That's kind of a cool idea. I think even Roca, a lot of people, I don't know when you think about, like you said, if it's presented to you as like an invitation, it's paid for, try this. I think people who normally wouldn't climb or feel comfortable going to, I know that's like overwhelming a little bit, right? To go to somewhere and say, the first time we went to Prairie Walls, which was years ago here, mm -hmm. it was like scary because I thought like, well, we don't know anything about rock climbing and these are probably rock climbers. And so it probably is something that draws people because maybe they've never yeah. done it, you know, yeah. or they do it and they like it. And it is, it's like, unless you want a membership, it can be expensive, you know? Yeah. We definitely have people that are like, Adult, the parents know that they like it, but I think they know that if their kid only wants to do it for 10 minutes, it's like an expensive experiment. So it's a chance to like experiment on somebody else's buck. And, but you're, you know, you, you're thinking like they'll probably like it, but I don't know. So, so I think for a lot of people, it's like their first, their kid's first exposure to it. Or um, the other thing that we had on this event that was new was we've always invited our tenants to the events, like our, our actual property management tenants but we rarely, they rarely come to anything. But I think because we specifically called them and invited them that we actually had like several groups of tenants. Um, and one group, I don't know if she'll ever be a buyer, but at least it's on her mind now. She specifically wanted to know like, well, why are you doing this? Why, you know, you know, she was happy to come, but I'm like, well, you probably don't want to rent for the rest of your life. So maybe in a couple of years, you're going to, call me and we're going to buy you a house. That's what we'd hope. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> but the other ones, like, is, there's like a group of grad students that rent together at this duplex that we manage. So like, they're probably for sure going to buy eventually. Mm -hmm. um, and that was when we took over from a different property manager. It was terrible. So they, they already know they like us because we're not terrible like the other people. And now we invite them to fun things. So that's awesome. Yeah. We're exciting. Matt, did you have any qualifying conversations with anybody? Uh, with any clients or, or, or customers, um, me and Jake practiced uh, uh, quite a bit, did some role playing on that and other 
you know, all kinds of scripts and buyer presentation. We just did a lot of all that this week. Um, so just trying to work out the words and clean it up and you know, so stumble so much over it and cut out all the extra that doesn't need to be there. So. Now you sent out, that's a crazy phone. I could, no, you sent out your um, announcement letter. Yes. And so those people are people you probably need to have that yep. conversation yeah. with follow up, right? Yeah. Yeah. A lot of them, um, you know, I did send it to like some of the immediate people around my, my neighborhood and stuff. So yeah. I don't have all of their, you know, phone numbers and stuff like that. But the ones that I do, um, I should start, you know, going through that. And, or, you know, someday I was thinking maybe when the weather's warmer, I would just take a walk and talk mm -hmm. to people that way. Um, you know, ones that I don't, don't have other ways to contact just to get in front of their face and introduce myself and, you know, kind of just see where they're at and go from there. So. Yeah. And the biggest thing is just to start with your family. Right. Yeah. Because it's yeah. just nice to, um, practice on people that'll give you some feedback or say, Oh, I think it sounds good. And then you kind of go to that right. next year, next year till. Yeah. 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 Yep. Get a few under your belt and kind of get comfortable with it. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. And did both of you watch the RP video? Yes. Okay. And the business universe unit video and then qualifying conversation video. Okay. Any, yep. Takeaways from that, anything good? I think it'll be exciting this year to kind of start leveraging some of those other people in those different roles. Um, and I've not called it that, like from the business universe, the, like the gatekeepers and what's the other one? Allied resources. Yeah, allied resources, but like I've got I think I've mentioned him to you before, Beth. There's a financial planner that's referred me a number of times. Mm -hmm. um, I just got an email last night from someone he referred me a year ago, and they're like, hey, we weren't ready when Richard first introduced us, but now we'd like to decide whether to remodel our house or sell it. Can you help us with that? So that's so awesome. That's Cause I think he, he already felt comfortable to do it, but once I can actually close something that he sent me, he'll have that much more like feedback from them like oh yeah that was really good oh look how Petra helped us and that's like I think that's something that Marsha was trying to connect with her financial advisor but I think that'd be something again that you could even incorporate into a learning event or hold something to have Patrick be a Patrick right you said Richard Richard I'm always like just exchanging names but Richard meet people too right is to have something where it's like you know, even if it's like the top five things you should know in 2020 or just for your savings or retirement or how to, mm -hmm. I, I mean, I, I always think that's exciting. Like, uh, that's another, it's becoming more and more scary to even approach a financial planner to feel comfortable going, whether you have debt. I mean, I've heard so many stories of even people who have insurmountable debt that they can't figure out how to get rid of and they know they should meet with someone. And then finally they get up like the nerve to go and meet with a financial planner. And just to have that plan, they just someone to sit down and say, start here. And, and this is for you customized is like huge. So I think yeah. there's a lot of value in just partnering and helping each other out. Mm -hmm. that's the awesome. other one that's emerging is um, we have a design build company that we met by referral through John's parents that, um, is working on our second floor bathroom and the the base the guy that we talk with all the time is a swedish speaking finn so he just thinks that my name is like the best thing ever so like he just is fixated on calling me petra but like with an accent so like even the people at his company all think that my name is like petra <laughs> like at our like meetings they like we're trying to say it like that and then yeah. He's like apologizing, like, oh, I'm sorry. Like, <laughs> everyone thinks that's your name now. Uh, anyway, but he's, he's been talking about doing, like, what if we did a seminar on, like, the cost to remodel versus the cost to sell? Um, mm -hmm. Or what if we did a whatever? He, like, sent me some ideas last week. Um, and I've had a couple opportunities this week to give their name out. So, like, um, I hadn't really thought of that before. And you have to have someone that actually is also has their client's best interest in mind, because if someone is thinking about a design build, but it's not good for them, <laughs> or they might want to like 
try on those other numbers to see what makes sense. Mm -hmm. Um, But people might go either direction on that decision. And so having like a trusted partnership between that kind of company for like listings, that's a great listing connection. Um, Yeah. And there's a lot of people who do the remodel route and then one year later to 18 months later sell anyways, because they sure. still want that change, but they thought that maybe just having the fill in the blank was going to yeah. do it. Mm-hmm. Well, that's good, good insight too. And then it's in great condition t- to sell it for them because it's remodeled rather than not. Yep. Yep. How about you, Matt? Anything from the videos you watched? Um... I guess just watching, you know, like the, the qualifying conversation videos like that one, you know, taking pieces of that and figuring out, you know, what I like best to incorporate, um, for mine, um, and the RP, you know, kind of the same thing, just, just finding out, um, what I'm comfortable with. I spent some time this week kind of typing out those conversations. I felt like it was easier for me to you know, write them down and then I could, you know, I'd write it down a few times and say, you know, have the stuff I don't need and, and redo drafts. And I feel like I got a pretty good place with, um, with a lot of those things. Um, just, just kind of taking pieces from there and hearing others um, do it uh, helps, helps a lot as well. So maybe, um, maybe like uh, today or maybe next time we'll practice. Okay. Yeah, that'd be. Next time or today? You want to practice right now or next time? Next time, uh, <laughs> want to run through it a couple of times with yeah. Yeah, I'd like to. I mean, I, I mean, I, I feel like I can do it, but I'd like to, you know, mentally be prepared. You know, I was watching yeah. that some of the Tom Ferry stuff this morning about like being in that right mindset when you're, you know, start your day and stuff like that. And I think that that um, is something that I really want to focus on, like trying to, you know, you know, when I wake up in the morning, just setting that that tone for the day and and. Um, I think that, that will help a lot with this stuff, you know, because it, it shows through when you're talking to people, um, mm-hmm. you know, that, that confidence and just that, that attitude and tone that you set that, um, yeah. So I'll practice and I'll be ready to impress you next time. Okay. Boys, so. Me too. Okay. Yeah. I think it's good. It's a good one. Just, to, uh, I was reading something as I prepare for this talk I'm going to give at this, uh, remix, um, uh, whatever, is that remix? Is that what you call it? Remax? I don't, whatever they're calling it, that 20, the thing in the Dells. And yeah. it was interesting because I was talk, reading as I'm freaking out about speaking. They were saying, and I do feel like I know this, the co op and conversation like this, like, you know, I think he was saying it's like a hundred repetitions maybe where it's like the happy birthday song, right? Where it's like, you, you can just, you can just sing it. Like you can just say right. it. It doesn't even matter. And I think that's why the only way you get there is that repetition, repetition, repetition. I mean, the only reason why I can do what I can do is just the number of times that I've had it. And, and again, I'm just as, in, I mean, it's not been, this isn't something either I've been doing for 20 years. So I think it's just making the commitment and doing it. And then the more you, and this is one of my biggest things that I get stuck in. And I, in the last you know year of really tried to overcome is that whole thing of, you know, experience comes from getting into action. So I'm very much like a planner. I want to write it out. I want to think about it. I, I don't know if I want to say it, but I've learned that the more I just had to say it, say it, say it, screwed up, screwed up. And, and then all of a sudden it really becomes your own too. So. Yep. Yep. Yeah. I was the video of Tom Ferry that I was watching. It's one of the ones that's on your agenda for today. Um, and he was saying that, you know, other professions, they practice their craft, whatever it is. That's if it's a pilot or whatever, mm-hmm. put in hours and hours of practice. Or a doctor, they don't just the first time out, you know, after they get out of medical school, go and perform some, you know, super complicated procedure. They do a lot of practice right before. And he said, it's the same thing, you know, if you're practicing scripts or whatever, he said, it just takes putting in the time and, mm-hmm. you know, you're not, no one was born that way that they were able to just you know, do it accidentally the first time, pick it up and you know, nail it, right? It just takes practicing it, so. Yeah, right, 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 right. Absolutely true. So today is about um, 
lead generation. And so it sounds like even Petra, maybe she isn't so much of a generation. It's going to be a conversion and <laughs> maintaining. Matt yeah. may still need some generation. <laughs> but I mean, I think the biggest thing is, is, you know, with both anybody is just the ability to have that consistent. And they talk about this in convert a lot too, which is just kind of one of those truths about real estate is the key to having that consistent income and, and building a real estate practice. No, uh, getting out of that cycle of worrying, like, you know, whenever year starts, I don't sit and freak out. Like, oh, I don't know if I'm going to do anything this year. It's like, I know it comes. I know by just doing repetitions and the systems that we have and the RP and my past clients that I will at least make a certain dollar amount every year. And that's kind of the goal instead of starting every week or every month. Like I have no idea. I can make zero <laughs> or I can maybe make some money. So, and I think the biggest thing is, is just that daily practice of, and it's one of the hardest things of prospecting, right? Like even when I did the board behind me, which I need to erase, I mean, it's minimum like one to two hours a day of kind of building in that, um, lead generation and prospecting. So how do both of you feel like on a scale of one to 10, you'd rate yourself on that daily commitment to following up? To following up for two hours or to following up in general? Well, you could use, you, you could do two hours a day. You I totally could. I, that's hours. what I would say. I would say that I'm following up every day and I'm following up more over the weekend than I was. Um, and just being deliberate about taking some week. It depends partly on my showing activity on Saturday, but um, I, if I sit down for an hour on Saturday and even like a couple hours on Sunday afternoon and do, that's when I do my Zillow touches, mm -hmm. just see who hasn't been touched for a while in Zillow, see if the categories are right. Um, so I feel like my weekend patterns are getting pretty good but now getting from just like some follow-up for 30 to an hour and getting that up to two hours would make a big difference. So and I would not give myself a 10 on, on that, but I would say okay. weekend, maybe I give myself an eight and then during the week, maybe like a seven. Yeah. But I think it's good. Even if you're doing 30 minutes a day, just to set a goal of getting to, even if it's 45 minutes or one hour. And I think the, benefit that you have with V is if, if it is two out, you, you definitely have two hours of work every day, like a people in your whole big bucket. So yeah. I think even if V is doing an hour and you're doing an hour or, you know, eventually if you get to the point where it's just who's having what conversations, like a filter of, you know, she's going to yeah. start here and work with this and I'm going to do this and exactly. But that's a good habit. Matt? I feel like for me right now, it's pretty easy to, you know, I don't have a ton of people that, you know, I, I think some of them I actually have to, okay, can't bug them every day, right? And I got to, you know, yep. I've been trying to do better about like setting tasks and follow boss and kind of follow along, you know, with that and the different scripts and stuff like that, that they had planned. Um, so yeah, like I said, at this point, I, I feel like I don't have too much trouble keeping up. I mean, there's you know, for my open houses and stuff, the first few weeks I did have a lot of activity. So I, you know, trying to, you know, get all those people in or anyone that was, that was worth getting into my contacts and, you know, reaching out and doing that stuff. But at least right now, I, I'd, you know, I don't have two hours worth of work and, and it hasn't been anything that's overwhelmed me terribly. To... So you have like 399 people? I mean, that, that was, I put everybody that I did my my sphere, my sphere, yeah. Yeah, mail list, I put all my family and all my, the neighbors, you know, the neighborhood, immediate neighborhood around. So that's, yeah, but as far as like actual people on a regular basis that I'm reaching out to, it's like 20 or 25, you know, it's much smaller than that. Um, but a lot of those people in my sphere, I need to start having the RP with. I think that's how something I should probably just put on my, you know, I'm going to, reach out, try and reach out to them, whatever, 10 people a day or, you know, just add that to my daily. It'll um, take you more than two hours to get through that list of 400. Yeah, it's certainly. Yeah. Yeah. But like I said, some of those, I don't have all the contact. I'll have to, like I said, walk around the neighborhood or find other ways to reach out or connect with them to make 
you know, have that conversation. And make this conference. What if you door knocked with like a uh, neighborhood values, make some, have Brianna make you some kind of cool, like flyer specific to that neighborhood right. and then mm-hmm. branded to Enclave and you. And so then you, to me, when I door knock generically like that, not yep. that I've done a ton of it, but if you, if you do it with something of value to give them, then it doesn't feel as weird to be like asking them questions or trying to have a conversation. If you like, cause then it just feels like even to them, like, why is this guy here trying to get my information? Right. Instead, You can lead with like, here, I brought you this like neighborhood update. Yeah. That's like, a good idea. Done that for, like, well, well, that. Yeah. And she's done that for Elton Hills and scenic Oaks. Like that's one of the farm things that we send out like a, a quarterly market report specific to those neighborhoods. So she can definitely plug those in. It's, it's like an infographic, but like really nice looking, super simple. Like here's the average sales price is how long it's taking in this neighborhood to sell. And, and you could ask her, you know, to see that and see what you think of yep. it, but it looks really nice. And then, and there's nothing wrong with branding yourself as a neighborhood expert because you live there, you know, you don't right. have to, you don't have to commit to mailing everybody right now or doing anything. And especially like Tom always says, is there's sweat equity and check equity. And until you get check equity, you know, even if you're like, Hey, I'm going to pop through, doesn't matter if you do it twice a year, I, you know, once a year, even I want you guys to right. know kind of what's happening in our neighborhood or right. get on the, the neighborhood Facebook page or whatever they have and just comment on there even quarterly as a yeah. member of yeah. the neighborhood. Yeah. You yeah get next door neighbor. What's that? Next if you got face to face with somebody and they seemed like they were like, Oh, thanks. Then you could just like take that right into a conversation. Like I'd love to like send this to you every couple right. of months, you know, would that be something like that you'd like? And if they right. say yes, then like, Oh, would you want me to mail it to you or email it to you? You know, we also have these other things going on. Could I keep you informed? You're 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 have a qualifying conversation. Yep, well, hey, right. who, is, who is the person that usually who provides this to you? I mean, again, modifying it a little bit to like, it's not like uh, if you were to buy or sell in the next year, because then that feels right. like you're standing at their doorstep and now you just became, a, if you right. are those feelings, a lot of us have, I don't want to be salesy. So then it's like, right. you know, are you getting this information currently? Is someone providing you this as a mm-hmm. homeowner? No. Great. I'd love to be the person to do that for you. You know, hey, can I ask like, and again, whether you feel comfortable or not, like who do you use or do you have somebody or however you want to do that, but you don't have to, again, you can just alter it a little bit to the situation. Right. Yeah, I like that. I think that sounds like some good ideas that uh, we'll have to talk with Brianna and, and uh, plan on doing that. I like think that, that, you know, for me, I mean, I've been in this area, even though I'm new, new in real estate here, I've been in this area a while, so I have, you know, my neighborhood, uh, you know, I do know a lot of people, so it won't be super weird uh, to every door. I and mean, I know enough that, you know, I, it'll be, you know, not always super uncomfortable to kind of get that ball rolling. And then once I get going, I think, you know, I, I mean, I, that's exactly what I want to say. Make it a farm. Or something that I, you, know. you will. Another thing that's big, that's big for me is like remembering that a no isn't bad. A no helps me guide my time and resources towards the people that have said yes and so even if some people say like no don't send this to me like that's freeing you up to make your list of 399 shorter but more focused and same for me like as v talks to people there will be tons of people that say no to her but then we will flush them down our (laughs) toilet permanently and not touch them again and not spend our time and those that say yes will give them more time and um but that that's a it's a mental, like, you kind of have to gear yourself up to hear the no, but like, just remember yep. that it is a good thing. Yep. And I'll just add like in 19 years, I had never had door knocked ever. And so for the first time last summer, I door knocked my neighborhood because we were having that summer solstice. And so I told everybody I was a real estate agent, I was having a party. And since they lived in the neighborhood, I wanted to invite them too. And I couldn't believe how many people were like super excited that they had someone knock on their door and like that it was, you know what I mean? They're just like, right. oh, hey, and like, oh, my wife isn't home or so good to meet yep. you. We haven't feel like we really got connected here. We don't know anybody. I was like so shocked at like the response that I got. I mean, I even did a couple of ring doorbells and, you know, I know they weren't home and I was talking to them from wherever they were. It was a weird thing. I was just <laughs> amazed at like, um, 
how receptive people were. And I even got like thank you cards from my neighbors and like, oh, we'd love to come back again. And you're wonderful. I got a lead down the street of somebody who's renting and they're like, great. Now we know somebody that we can call. And so I, I, I again, it's just, mm -hmm. you got to do it. And, and it, even if you wait till it's nice, even if you do a 40 degree day, Mm -hmm. it's nicer when it's cold like you know, they answer right. the door because they're like who's here like right. You know? <laughs> right right yep yeah no i think that's a great idea and, and when you know like you said it's not really salesy more than anything. you're just kind of offering or something if it leads to to more great you know if it naturally kind of leads to that rp or something like that another opportunity that's that's awesome but just kind of having it be more of a comfortable like like you said, you were just inviting them to, to that party. And so it wasn't like you were trying to, you know, sell them anything. Just like, hey, you're part of the neighborhood, you know, whatever, I'm having this event. I would think that people would be more receptive to that than to a lot of the normal people that knock on their door, right? And what they're getting, it's not not just, so. I think I did about 50 houses. It, Cause I did all sides, like a block, a block. I mean, the whole radius, anyone who I thought would be an earshot. and. What was amazing too is how many people it's just even getting that word out there, right? Like, wow, this guy does this, like my agent didn't do that, or you know, that's all it, it just is like you're throwing a client appreciation party. I've never been to a party like that. So I it, without even I haven't worked with any of them. So right. <laughs> Got to know my neighbors. It was good. Yep. So I think the biggest thing is just yeah, that communication is really important to success and it's what we do. And the more comfortable you get having those conversations. Um there is information on the sheet. And I think um, I'm going to do I'm gonna share. Uh, I think this is the one I want. Yeah. All right. So this is, it talks about here, like the lead measures and leg measures. And one of the things that's really important is this is a website you can go to and just watch a little video on the 40X. It's like amazing book. Like it's the four disciplines of ex execution. It's one that Tom did years ago that really changed uh, the way you think about business. But basically what it is, is like the, does anyone know, do either of you before I go on to what's a lead measure and what's a lag measure? I'm generally familiar, but. I watched the general, the video, general? video. It was just like a four minute video I watched. I got their description that the lag is like after the fact, things that you can't change, you know, it's measures of, you know, what happened or results, whether they're good or bad. And the lead is kind of trying to be proactive, figuring out um, what things you can do to maybe change some of those, those lag measures. So what are our, what are our like leading measures and what's our lagging measures? Well, our, our lagging measures are the, you know, statistics, how many, you know, sales do you have on the books? How many, you know, Zillow leads did you get? What did you do with, you know, things like that? Um, anything that, you know, and after the fact, statistics like that, I mean, we have lots, lots of, of those. Um, Paychecks, as as yeah. Paychecks, yeah. Right, right. <laughs> it's the biggest one, yeah. Um, as far as leading ones, um, a lot of the systems, you know, that, that I guess that we have in place, because of you know the experience that you know the team or has had, and so we found areas where if we you know explain this up front or we you know set this expectation, um, things tend to go smoother or whatever it may be. You don't have have these issues because we already dealt with it or approached it ahead of time. You know, trying to, again trying to be proactive um, to mm -hmm. achieve the results that we want, have successful outcome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think the lead measures are the prospecting, the door knocking, the conversations that we have. That's basically it. I mean, I think even in what I do, I and you have to just know that, like, if you continue to do that consistently, it will work. It's like you're building this big funnel, and then eventually it turns into lag or that next step. She's always she's talking to Jake. Yeah. <laughs> She said, you have to, uh, is she leaving? Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> I'm just going to text you. Yeah. Her name is Melanie Ashbaugh. 
Petra, I don't know if you have one in your office, and she's the biggest time waster. She just I met her on Tuesday. I was oh like, gosh. oh, friendly agent. I like introduced myself, and then she just kept talking, and I'm thinking like, doesn't she have anything to do? Uh, I'm going to turn to my computer now. <laughs> Poor Matt, though. He got left, but I, I left to... him behind in the conversation. <laughs> she came in again yesterday, and I had to... I had to walk out. I had to put my coat on and just literally like walk away. I'm like, I gotta go. (laughs) I used to say something to her and almost like yell at her. And I I'm about to like, because I, and I, we even have like a code, like if anyone sees her, we'll call or we'll be kind of make Mm -hmm. a reason like, well, I got to get this. And it's just to try to. (laughs) Yeah. All right. So, yes. Okay. So anyways, all of our leaders, <laughs> kind of like what we went over the other week is like basically all those, like, what's the next step? Permission to have a conversation. And, and again, it's just building this huge funnel that I guarantee it works where it would just always generate a certain amount of deals and transactions, as long as you keep following it. And in the beginning, it feels like it can't be true. I mean, I even myself have this as, you know, I, when I, recruit right i have a lot of conversations and it's nothing and it's nothing and it's nothing but pretty soon it turns into 35 people 50 people that you're talking to and i know because i've done this once building a business that if i keep doing those things like it will happen it just may not happen on my timeline but it it will work as long as i'm intentional and just like having the right conversations with the people who want to talk to me right i mean getting that's what i love about that permission based is like do you want to have this conversation? Because if I don't want to have a conversation with you or you don't want to have a conversation with me, great. I want to focus my limited time on the things that matter that will yield lagging measures instead of just all the leads. So it's kind of like Petra said before, but I know is okay because then you know to not, mm-hmm. not waste your time or focus your energies there, right? We want to be, like I said, having the conversations yeah. with the people who want to have them. One of the things I love like Matt James said too is it's like a dog whistle where you know, you have, you, you have who you are as a person and you're not going to appeal to everybody for, for whatever reason, you're a man, you're a woman, you're too young, you're too old, you're, you said something, you're too conservative, you're too liberal. It doesn't matter, but it's like, you just have to like not take it personally and just say, great. That means I have time for somebody who does like, know, and you know, me, trust me, likes me versus trying to like fight that like business with something that just is, you know, counterproductive that they really aren't feeling it or you're not feeling it. And, and in long term, not that you don't get into those once in a while, but mm-hmm. as much as you can um, mitigate that, the better your job right. is your enjoyment all around and not taking that. And, and that was really hard for me for too many years is that I wanted to be everything to everyone, you know, and. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. I can relate to that. Okay, this is like a Tom Ferry thing. I know Marsha thought about renaming it, but I really like it. I, I, it's just that hour of power, right? So it, at least Tom always says it's like that one hour. I mean, not just Tom. Everyone talks about prospecting every day, but does anyone know what his like 554 thing is? Like what 554 says it, but. <laughs> is it like five people you, I don't know the difference, but it's like people you know, mm-hmm. um, people you don't know, and then like, maybe people you're already in process with you like lead follow-ups so it's like five people you know five people new and four lead follow-ups and i think one of the hardest things about when you start is sometimes even after a while like i don't care even me like five new people i mean that's Mm. can be the toughest thing but i think and that's why i don't even know if he talks about that as much anymore i think it's more what i have always loved about it is that intention of we can get into that lead follow-up pattern too, where we spend our hour always doing lead follow-up. And although that is valuable, it is just as important, like Matt, like you were saying, to start having those conversations with your family Mm -hmm. and, you know, people that are in your database and make sure that we're talking to them and also trying to think about like, who can I add? So of all these people I'm following up with them, I'm following up and maybe it's a nurture, like, can I get any new people in? And I think even if you could add, I think even John Colby always says like, you know, even if it was one a week or two a week that are new is huge. That's 50 people in a year. I mean, a lot of people don't even achieve that. So I, you know, Tom always is like, he's the 10 X guy. So everything is always like, seriously. But I I think reality is even if you focused on one a week, you know, I mean, there's someone Mm -hmm. that, and for you, 
especially that's something to to have in the back of your mind but you could even spend all your time in with the 299 or 399 people just yep. having those conversations plus the lead follow-up you know right yep yep well and sometimes i think you are having conversations and you are meeting new people, but even just taking the discipline to formalize it in your mind, maybe the conversation, the conversation maybe does need to be different and needs to be the qualifying conversation. But sometimes I think you're having a conversation, but the, just the discipline of like, hey, that friend I had at the party indicated an interest in real estate and basically gave me permission to talk to her about real estate, so even though it wasn't the qualifying conversation. In retrospect, I realize I should like, maybe call them back and say, Hey, we had that conversation. And mm -hmm. would you want me to keep in touch with you about real estate and get the permission and put them in the, put them in the RP rather than just not remembering and right. not following up with them. So like right. you didn't like that in that scenario, you didn't chase them. They came to you, but then do they make it into your system or do you forget about them? Right. Yeah. Recognizing those opportunities sometimes because you there's probably more of them throughout the day that you don't, don't even make the connection at the time. Like, ah, oh, I should have taken that opportunity to, you know. Well, and I think sometimes we expect our friends and family to know that we would want to do business with them, but sometimes they're shy and they have like a more elevated perception of us than we even have. And they think, oh, like Tifa's too busy and successful. She wouldn't want to do right. business with me. Or maybe she does these big expensive properties, not my normal average property. And so they just kind of talk themselves out of it. Or if they ask like a really vague question, it's really them really, really passively trying to enter a more specific right. conversation, but they're looking for you to pick up on that. Since you're a salesperson, they'll probably know to ask mm -hmm. them the next step, or I don't know what the next step is. So I've sometimes realized after the fact, hey, that person was trying to have a real estate mm -hmm. conversation with me and I was like spaced out. Yeah. <laughs> right. Or just like, if your answer is like, yeah, I'm really, how's it going? Yeah, I'm really busy with appointments when they hear the word busy then they hear like oh maybe you don't have time for me versus mm -hmm. like here are some specific things i'm doing but finding a way to not say i'm busy <laughs> right so yeah and like i said you don't want to miss the, those opportunities especially if it's you know with family or friends because you didn't at least offer or say i mean because you again you present it a different way they got the impression that you were you know too busy for them but if you just say hey i want to be your person whenever you know Mm -hmm. if you're not really thinking about that right now that's great but when the time does come you know or if anything comes up you know so yeah that's a good point i think for me especially getting it kind of getting started in that 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 even makes more sense just hearing you say it that way to to have that you know because at first i was like ah, oh, my family they all know that right they all know that that i'm doing that they're gonna you know call me but not necessarily right unless yeah. you actually say hey you know like I said, you don't well, want to make people feel more yeah. special. Like when you ask them, then it's like, cool. Like, wow, someone yeah. wanted to do business with me versus. Right. Not with you. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. I like that. I think the other thing is, is I always having that conversation of, you know, I, I just want to put it out there too. Sometimes people say, you know, don't work with friends and family, but I think it's always when the expectation isn't set up front that, you know, sometimes it doesn't work out because they treat them differently than someone that they work with. And I just want you to know that I'm committed to treating whether I know somebody or not the exact same way. So they have the exact same experience, you know, and I think, you know, even if it comes up or if it feels, or if that's, if, if anyone says anything, and that's been one of the biggest, I talked about in the buyer presentation class I did game changers is like treating everyone. And it was awkward at first. I'd say, okay. And, and it started even with the RP, right. Of saying, I'm having this conversation with you, you know, and they're like, Oh, come on. And it's like, no, I'm serious. So like, do you want to know about your house or would, do you want this information? And, and I think it just sets that tone of like, I can be a professional. And then there's times where at a family gathering or if we're out together, I'm your friend, you know, but I also have the ability to act in a way and they can see you in a way that they don't get to see you in their daily life. Right. Mm -hmm. So, and then again, there's some stuff in there that talks about that mindset, like that pregame warm up. And the biggest thing is, is, you know, for me, I just know those measures. I know how many people I have to have. I know how many conversations I have to have, how many hours. And so I think 
even if it's before I have playlists for me personally. Um, I even have some affirmation type listening things that I listen to before. And just if I know that that's something I'm doing that day. Um, and I, I like to do, and again, I know it's too that like, I can't do two hours in a row. I just can't like, it just is too much. Like, so I'd rather do an hour, take a break and then do an hour later is better for me. Um, twice a day than like two hour block. I just, just, ugh sucks the life out of me. But yeah, all of those things, writing a list of people you want to talk to, anything to help you get in that right mindset of, you know, Tom always used to say too, I love it. Like they're, what was it? They're home. They're happy. They want to talk to me. They're home. They're happy. You know, or, you know, just even (laughs) as you said, how many people you start out and you're like, dial the phone and you're like, Oh, please don't pick up. Please don't pick up. Please don't pick up. (laughs) So then when they pick up, you're like, Oh, like that's how your mind is. Conversation (laughs) with like, Oh, I don't, you know, Mm -hmm. we had to do a role play one time. I love it. It was like, you know, kind of like what it looks like in reality before you get ready to prospect. And it is, it's amazing, right? You kind of get this nervous energy and you make a couple excuses and then maybe you have to go get a cup of coffee or a water. And then you're like, Oh, I think I have to go to the bathroom and like, Oh, I better write this list down. And I just got to check this one more time. And then it's like your posture is kind of like, okay, you know, and, and again, your thoughts are Oh, I hope they're not home. And like, I don't know what I'm going to say versus like, if you switch it to, you know, saying positive things, I want them to be home. I want them to answer. This is what I'm going to say. I'm going to have this conversation with them. I have valuable information that they're going to appreciate. It just changes the whole outcome and the ability to do it consistently. And even your, you know, whether I, I stand or my posture or smiling or whatever it takes and energetically being ready for that. Uh, but it, it's, it's so funny that we have to do that. And he always talks about like, he was crazy. Like he would sit and be like hundred dollar bills, hundred dollar bills, like flying out of your pocket, like, like all over. And he would talk about just like in the office, he would watch star Wars on his computer and he'd sit and like, do like, you know, he was like, uh, had the Jedi Jedi, and then he'd get on the phone. I mean, but and again, I've never gone to that extreme, but I, I also think it really matters. I, I've been with him behind stage and it's really crazy. He's got a trampoline backstage before he goes up on the stage and he like jumps on the trampoline and just gets like super psyched up before he goes out. And it's just, you know, again, all that energy or people are attracted to it. Right. I mean, it's like positive. It's, you know, something you want to be around and it sounds really silly, but it's no different than I'm sure a surgeon, unless they've done something a million times, right. They probably prep and like what kind of surgery, where's this at? They're reviewing the case. I mean, it's just all that stuff that we do in preparation to make it a success. I'll tell you about my weekend prospecting routine. Okay. So I um, get a glass of wine and maybe I put music on. And because most of the weekend stuff is like texting and emails, but if they call, I'm ready to talk to them. Mm -hmm. But then that's something I look forward to. Like, oh, I'm gonna have my relaxing, like, prospecting time on the couch and I can do that for two hours I can but what you're saying in the office with the calls I couldn't I can't do that two hours in a row but um but yeah it's a good it then it's like a good association for me like oh it'll be relaxing and I'll get this work done and then I'll feel really good going into the week that everything's categorized right and I always get a few no's like on the Zillow leads like yeah I didn't contact you because I don't want you to talk to me anymore um but then I'm just like great recategorize but I you know there's old ones that are like oh yeah I am looking and I'm excited like oh good I've got like some new ones that I had forgotten about that now I can refocus on and yeah I love that like at night too that's one of my favorite things um at night is my email uh text lead gen time and I love it too it's like my favorite things to do after dinner, because I spend a lot of time at, at my, I do work from a desk, like in the day, but I love like, that's what I look forward to at night is like, I'm going to get my laptop. I'm going to sit on the couch. Like you said, sometimes if it's a glass of wine or not, but the fireplace on and that's what I'm going to do for an hour. Um, my kids are a little bit older than yours, Matt, where it's like, mm-hmm. then they're usually up doing homework or doing their thing too. Right. And it's kind of like, or if they do their homework, we're all sitting there doing our work. And it's like, I know my cut off is eight o'clock and I kind of actually look forward to it. I just think it's like a, I go to bed every night 
yeah, I sleep well because it just feels like you said, Petra, for you on the weekend, just that I kind of touched base with everyone I wanted to and got some emails out and then they're going to be there for me the next day. So, mm -hmm. do you have a routine yet? And to have done a lot of that kind of that same thing following up like in the evenings and stuff and trying to get all that done. I think I even like you just said, I sleep better because a lot of times if I don't, if I have those lists in my head about, oh, I got to do this, I got to do that. It's hard to turn it off. So if I can kind of check all those things before, you know, I go to bed, I, I feel like I sleep better um, with that. And then, you know, as far as like the, you talked about like Tom and, and Petra, you guys' routines and how you kind of put yourself in the right mindset. I mean, that reminds me of, of sports, you know, same thing, like, you know, before you go out for a game or whatever, you're playing some music that gets you pumped up and, you know, just to get your you know mind right. And um, just kind of the same thing, just, you know, just getting that, that, that energy, you know, like you said, he's jumping on a trampoline or whatever, just so your, your blood's pumping and you're just, you know, you're like you're ready to go rather than having the opposite posture and whatever. I mean, um, one of his videos that I watched, he kind of said just exactly that, that, you know, if your posture is, 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 is the opposite of that, people can hear that, you know, whether it's on the phone or, you know, whenever they don't want to talk to you. In fact, I would, Petra, we listened to a Zillow call of yours yesterday. Marcia told me that. I was like, oh. <laughs> it was excellent. We could hear. I mean, it was excellent. And it was pretty recent, I think, just within the last few days or a week. Yeah. Um, and, I mean, that was exactly what we could hear through the call. I mean, from the minute you answered it until the minute you hung up with the guy. And and I think he was pretty excited and, and stuff just because of, of the tone that you set, you know, you know from the minute you picked it up. And it was a good lesson to remember because I think, um, you know, a lot of times, like you said, when, when you get on the phone, if you're like, oh, please don't answer, please don't answer, you definitely don't have that that attitude. When they do pick up, right, you don't have that um, that that uh, tone set. So uh, yeah. just trying to make sure that you do it no matter when or where you know, you're talking with him. He, um, he wanted so much to just, he wanted to give information out and he wanted to be directed. And I think the main thing for me was like catching that right away rather than just trying to direct him into setting up a showing. And like, right. Once I realized that it was like, he wants to tell me a bunch of stuff. So I'm just taking notes and like yep. making sure I respond often enough that he knows I'm still there. Cause he had a lot yep. to say. Um, yeah, he did. Yeah. And, yep. um, but yeah, that was kind of part of it for me is like, oh, I'm excited. This guy like wants to connect. This is the first, this is, I could tell this is the first conversation that he's had with someone. Like if you, have you been on the convert calls with Matt? The con the convert, uh, ones that you convert, convert, convert. Yeah. yeah. He, well, he talks about like, you know, these people, like we kind of assume that they don't really want to talk to us, but like if it's literally their first time, they've maybe been researching for like months and they finally decide to talk to someone like, Right. if we can be there for that call in that way, like they want to yeah. have a good experience. They're excited. Um, well, that was so kind of, yeah. Marcia said that, you know, when they click that button to actually call someone, they probably are a little excited. Like you said, a lot of times it's the first time that they're actually finally feeling confident enough to do that. And it is kind of a little exciting moment for them, at least to some extent. And so to you know, like I said, recognize that and kind of, you know, keep, keep it that way for them set that tone rather than just right to business and you know whatever it's I think is like I said uh, you handled it really well and it was a good lesson for me as far as uh, how I should you know think about every time I pick up that phone and, and talk to you so I like Jake tells this story I have to ask Jake I don't remember it was super fun because I sold him his house and he was talking about like how scared he was and he was a salesperson, but to actually call. And I can't imagine today too. I know even something that costs much, much less, like how scary it is to push the button, right? Like when you know that like someone's going to be talking to you and just think about how you feel. It's like, Oh, they're going to reach out to me or they're going to call me. And like, I, you know, you're nervous about being sold to, and you just have maybe a question or you just, want an answer or you just want to know what's next and it's tough right when people are yep. pushed to doing that so i think there's some other you know tom Ferry videos that are kind of fun it sounds like you guys kind of watched them but i think the business the biggest thing and just like the convert like matt 
and all this, you know, and things that are important is just, you know, we're building business by building people and just wanting to build up people that we work with. And it is an investment in people and making an investment in people is what makes you successful in this business is I think people can tell absolutely. And again, it doesn't mean they won't work with someone that they know is just trying to sell them. They'll just go into that protection defensive mode of like, we're just going to limit what we say. And we, we just want this house. So we're just going to deal with this person, but we're never using them again. But again, I think the way to have that repeat and referral business is, and I, I don't need to say this to either of you, is just that investment. So the conversations that we have are a lot of them, like Matt said too, is I really feel like we're post information age, right? So I sat down with a young couple a couple of weeks ago, because I like to do every once in a while just to stay current. And I said, you know, you guys have been looking for like a year, a year and a half. So maybe you, maybe you've already gone online, you know, everything about buying a house and you've done some research and they're like, yeah, yeah. They're talking. They're like, we kind of know we just, you know, we're ready. We found this house that we like, and we heard that maybe we should use a buyer's agent. So I said, okay, that's great. That's, that's awesome that we're sitting down. Like I had our book and I said, let's just go through the home buying process. So if you look at this and you just look at the page and I'm just, it's kind of fun because I can just test. It wasn't a typical buyer where I said, do you, when you look at it, do you feel like you know what all that is? You read it. And then I could start to see like overwhelm and, um, you know, c- kind of like, I don't, and I said, well, let, just let me go through it. And you could stop me if you know it. And I went through it and super helpful. All the questions that they wanted it laid out, like the money, right. Which it does. They, asked me even like, I said, you know, when I got to the point, like, then you're going to write an offer. So if this is the house, the first thing we're going to do is it's not verbal. You don't submit it anywhere. Like we're actually going to fill out paperwork that is committing you to like putting in price and terms to buy a home. And they're like, and like, who does that? Like, can, can you do that? I'm like, yeah, I can do that. (laughs) You know? And they're like, really, you could help us with that. I'm like, yep, that's what I do. (laughs) can help you fill out the paperwork. But I mean, it was like bonkers to me because it's just how much it changes year after year, like how much more people like, especially young people that disconnect. I mean, there's so much information out there. So they're not coming to us. Like I say this, like when 19 years ago, when I started, people came to us for information because it wasn't on the internet. Right. I mean, you, you couldn't find any of this stuff. Well, today they think they know it, but what they need is, is like, someone to guide through all of the stuff now that they've read and boil it down into like, I always love the, um, visualization of like a map, right? So first of all, you got to locate them on the map. Like, where are they? Right. Cause it's like, you, they think they know where they know where they are, but you don't know where they are. And then once you find them, it's like, okay, how do I get you to go? And I'm going to show you the way. So here's where you are and here's where you are going and what you need to do. So it's advice. Like Petra said, it's listening, it's insight into like what they're saying. They need someone to be that outside person. Number 67, St. Paul, Minnesota, 55107. I'm accepting a Zillow lead in the background. Don't worry about it. And the third one is like that leadership, someone to lead them. Like it's like they know they want to do this. They feel that they can do this, but they need someone to lead them through the process. So, we like um, Oh, is this a tour one? So have you been getting a lot of these? I've heard that there's a lot more. Yeah, they're not on the line, but they want a specific tour. So yeah. I just accept them. And then if I can't do it, I try to figure it out with Rick first and then yeah. John Leonard's team at worst. Yeah, cool. AJ asked me about that last week. He said that they're nationwide seeing a lot of people, a big response in being able to tour. And they asked how many we've gotten. I don't know. I've gotten a few. I, it's hard for me to remember just like, I met two or three people in person last week and I can't remember which ones were tours and which ones were live connects, but yeah. I think I had seen a few that way too, at least two or three that came through that I went out with. So, yeah. Yeah. It's a huge shift though. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. And I think, you know, again, um, it's that five step sales process, which we're going to learn, which again, is like that rapport. And that's where you are in that first stage is rapport. And then one of the most important things about rapport is just listening <laughs> <laughs> you know, and just being someone that they feel like that I am ready to be open to receive advice. And I trust this person that they're going to do right by me and that they're going to lead me through the process. And I absolutely believe in everyone on the Enclave team that that is their goal. And so I don't need to get into that because everyone was chosen. And I believe that absolutely. 
So again, it is just the one thing I think is cool too, that as an agent, like kind of that next step and that next level. And I see this, especially when people get experienced is they lose their, they start, uh, having all these beliefs and they, they have different perspectives because of things they've experienced. They start putting people into boxes and they start like, you know, making decisions of what's best for them and what they should do. And I think it's the best thing is if you can try to stay as much as possible in the beginning, especially to being open and not predetermining like, Oh, this person isn't going to buy, or this person is going to do this, or this person should do that. Because I just think you're pigeonholing people and limiting it versus just, staying open and letting them guide. And that's a great thing. It takes a lot less energy, like to not have to control it all yourself is just to be there as like someone who can listen and guide them. That's, that's a, it's kind of a really fun job instead of feeling like somehow you have to like tell them, or you, you know, assigned yourself so many agents assign themselves to be like the control freak. And like, I want to control you and I'm going to tell you how it's going to be and who you're going to work with and what it's going to look like. And I just think it's, yeah, something that I don't think the consumer wants, especially going forward. You can still have value without having to control it. And absolutely, you're more appreciated when they get to kind of call the shots and you're there as like a, a leader to just kind of encourage, listen, guide, and take them through the process. Did you agree with that? I think that's yeah. a good lesson in all life. I think that it is, yeah. Mm -hmm. Not prejudge or think that you know, you know, what someone else wants or that you know better, right? To, to let them kind of guide that part, but otherwise you're there along the way to just, you know, assist, you know, and, and, and advise and whatever you can to, to help them get to the finish line wherever they set that to be, you know. So, when I was in the Twin Cities last week, I taught two classes, one in Woodbury, one in Edina. Both of them had an agent that it was really cool that was experienced, like been around same as me, like 20 years, making Platinum Club, like selling, you know, decent amount of real estate. One was more than that. Chairmans are Titan, I don't know. But, you know, um, one of them, he was just having a tough time. One of, I think that pigeonholing and thinking like he knew what everyone should do and also not feeling comfortable with prices because in South Minneapolis, he couldn't get over what houses sold for 20 years ago and what they sell today. And he doesn't know if he feels right, but he's getting killed by like new agents because to them, they don't know any different. And they just think like, well, that's the price, mm -hmm. you know, but we had a great conversation about like, I mean, I've been there and I've been through that. And I, when I started, I said, that was the same thing. Like I remember um, like my dad and all his counterparts and they were talking about how they couldn't believe these houses were going for a hundred thousand. And I just thought like, they're like a hundred thousand, like that's like the bottom of the market. And they couldn't believe that someone would ever pay a hundred. And I just thought they were so antiquated, you know, it was just like, oh, you guys are just old fashioned and kind of silly. And it just reminded me of that, like listening to him talk about it. And the reality is, is like now he becomes he's hurting, right? I mean, his buyers by his predetermined like beliefs about like what someone's paying. And he even said he has felt horrible because he's lost houses for like three or four people. And he really feels like it was his fault, but he was really, it was a cool conversation. Like he was open to it and honest where it's like, you know, the biggest thing is, is like, all you can do is the stats. And if this is what the stats and this is what they're selling for the last three months or six months, that's reality. And you have to let go of like everything, you know, of what they once sold for or what it was or in the good old days or pre-recession or what if a recession comes. And those are all things that we can't control. And it's, it could happen again, but all we know is what's happening today and this is what they want. And then I'm here to tell them it's not to deceive people and let them know, but if they still choose, I've had people all the time choose things that in my mind, I'm like, that's never going to work, but we've, we talked about it. They thought they wanted it. And that's great. They call me in a year and a half and they're like, you were right. We made a mistake or we should have bought that bigger house or we should have done this. And it's like, Hey, that's okay. You had to do that to understand like that you were ready for it. You didn't think you were. And unfortunately, you know, it's a little inconvenient versus doing it one time, but that was just part of your journey. Right. And so again, no judgment, like that's yep. fine. What you need. So I think that, and the other guy, just his piece of work. And, you know, he just 
completely controls. And it was interesting because it went online and he even had really bad reviews. But I just think that it's an easy thing to fall into is to think that you are above it and you know best. And it's like, mm-hmm. no, because you don't live in their their life and you don't know what it's really about and you don't know what their journey is. And so I just think that anytime, I, I mean, I felt prey to that myself and about year 10 through something, I thought like, I wanted to sell everybody the perfect house to recession proof it. Right. So it's like, Oh, and I heard people say this who have been around at these classes, which was awesome to be able to teach to people who have been in business a long time where it's like the fear is, is like, I want them to buy something that if it was the recession, people would still want it. And it's like, but all houses sell in the recession. They just may sell at different prices. So even if you buy it for less today, it will sell for less during a recession, but it still will sell. I mean, all the houses sold that were priced right. I mean, it, they didn't sell if they couldn't go to where the market was. That's all it was. But I did the same thing where it's like, oh, you don't want to live on a corner because you don't want to shovel out of that sidewalk. And, oh, you don't want a multi-level because there's all these stairs and there's not a main floor bathroom. Oh, you don't want this or you don't want that. And it's like, well, who, is that a fact? Or is that just like all these opinions mm. that I've acquired from people telling me that? And does that really apply to everyone? So I think, again, just keeping that, I love that just, I just keep trying to think like, I'm not here to, to deliver information anymore. Not that I, I don't, but I think it's more just what people really want. And that's what we want in life, right? Is that me culture of like, I think I know best. So mm-hmm. it, the second I just kind of um, accepted that and just said, okay, great. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm here to help you and make the best decision for you, but yep. I'm not here to call the shots was a good day. And it was a lot more fun than trying to fight. Yeah. That's the problem of like the, the generation that we're in. I think the problem is, is that, and that's what I was saying in this class is that people will make more mistakes than when the agent was more calling the shots, right? Because they think they know, they think they know what they want and maybe they don't because they don't know how to like really analyze and see everything. However, it's good for us because they'll move more often (laughs) for a while, you know? (laughs) Do you think it's easier for them to swallow a mistake too, if they're the ones who made the decision versus if they feel like you Guided them incorrectly or led them to where they didn't want to be. If they felt like, you know, you pushed them in something they didn't want, you know, that's why the people have bad views and, and get bad mouth and things like that. But if they feel like they did it, they're like, yeah, she even kind of warned us a little bit. She still let us make our own decision. But you know what? Now maybe we learn from that and, and they want to come back and, and maybe get some of that good advice that you gave them the last time, right? Yeah. So I think it's, a, I mean, in general, a lot easier for people to to accept the things if it was, they feel like they're the ones who made that decision. I had a broker them. years ago who taught me, I always used to use language like, like we are going to buy a house. We are going to go out showing when we make an offer, when we, 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 and he warned me, I mean, this is like years ago. He said, it's not you. <laughs> like it is mm-hmm. that they need to own every decision and everything that they do. It doesn't mean they're not there to guide them, but it is, you are going to write an offer. You are making this decision. You are telling me you want this. You need to, this is your loan officer. I'm here to do this for you, but I, it is you. And it was, it's just such a difference because I've never had transaction fixes like some people have. I really do feel like it's a big thing to my repeat and referral. And again, I do not push it to the point either where like my most recent example I just gently said, like, right, it's just asking good questions. A great question or a good question is better than a great answer. Just like, do you think that this house is large enough? You know, if your family comes back from Ecuador, if, you know, if you have any more children, do you feel like this is going to be enough? You know, do, you know, mm-hmm. Soledad, you're saying that the closet is already kind of small um, and you're having a tough time with that. Are you going to feel like you want you? There's no way to remodel this, right? We can see you like mm-hmm. cannot be altered. Mm-hmm. And, and that's all I did, but they still said, yeah, we'll be okay. We'll be okay. We'll be okay. And then they weren't, but it's not also getting to the point where it's like, I told you so. And so that people can come back and say, oh, you, you asked us this and we kind of knew we should have paid more attention, but we really thought that, you know, we want to stay in this price range. Cause that is the difference is they're at home having conversations about the one or two things that really matter. So in that situation, it was when you live in a, $300,000 house and you're going to a, you know, 
$550,000 house that feels already scary, but it's more comfortable versus going up to a six, $700,000 house, right? And I've had two people this last year that they weren't ready to go to that $700 million house, even though they could afford it, but it just felt like too big of a jump. And I think that's okay. Some people can do it. And sometimes you got to take that step in the middle to know like, okay, maybe we should have, but yep. now we we're ready, yep. you know, that's okay. Yep. So I think it's a huge difference. I think that, um, depending on the integrity of the person, it's not like we're hundred percent guaranteed that they won't blame things on us, but all we can do is control ourselves. Mm -hmm. Um, I had some clients that would not write good offers. And I think the big issue was, I think there were two issues. One is they never saw the house that they really wanted. So they were writing bad offers because they didn't really want the houses. But then the second was they just weren't being honest with themselves about the fact that I don't know if they weren't ready or they didn't, there was something in there where they weren't, they, I was doing exactly what they told me and we weren't getting it. And I was telling them this offer will not get you the house, but I will write the offer you're telling me. Um, and they're like, that's okay. This is, this is all we feel comfortable writing. And then at the end of the summer, um, Rick got them under contract on something and we had a, person contingent to buy their home and they pulled the plug on it. And then a month later um, sent me a note like, Oh, we decided to go another direction with a different agent. And I said, you know, tell me more about that. And then basically they were blaming, blaming me that I didn't basically blaming me for taking time off with the kids and that because Rick was inexperienced, that's why it didn't work. And that just wasn't true. <laughs> the ones we didn't get were because they were writing crappy offers that mm -hmm. we did exactly as they told us and then the one that we got was where they finally got serious and we got them one on the first serious offer they wrote and then they decided to pull the plug so but I think that I can't fix somebody else not being honest even with themselves like they've got bigger issues so it's a heartburn but and it's really hard for people most people really their tolerance for confrontation or being wrong is like next to nothing. So in that situation, now they have to come back and be um, wrong because they wrote an offer. Now they don't want it. And I, I think to overcome that a lot of times they're going to find whatever scapegoat they can, but yeah. it really had to do with uh, that's uncomfortable to feel like, wow, I, you know, think about how many times I've had, I, I've talked to people where they're like, Oh my gosh, I, we just feel so bad because we haven't bought anything and it's been, especially when you get in those upper price ranges, they're looking for these like perfect houses. So they're like, it's been like three years and I'm like, I, I don't care. Okay. So just stop right now. Cause it's yep. like, I'm I, again, let's think that it has been three years. And so, you know, I would like to see you get the house and I would like you to see you have it happen. And I'm okay if it takes four or five years and you're not an inconvenience. So I don't want you to stop calling me. I don't want you to think you have to call somebody else. I don't want you to feel bad because if it is bad and if I have an issue with it, like I'll tell you that, but it's like, I don't. So let's keep moving forward. But I think that again, even as simple as like, we haven't performed yet and what we feel like now we've wasted their time. The mentality is like, well, we'll, we'll just go with somebody else because that's easier than just like telling Beth, we feel kind of bad that we've mm -hmm. taken so long. Like that, that's the mentality out there is like, that's an easier decision is just to disappear and go use somebody else than like, continue to bother they're, you right they're eliminating that count that confrontation like you said they have zero they just what can we do to just avoid that entirely just dip and go somewhere else you know that's it's always easier to you know, back to peter's thing to just to blame someone else right it's hard thing to admit you were wrong or you made a mistake or you know whatever you made a bad decision that yeah if there's a way that they can not even think about that you know a lot of times people will choose that path and there's not a lot you can do about that other than like you said just kind of explain laying it out up front like i don't have issues with this it doesn't matter to me how long it takes or you know whatever i mean the features one there probably was nothing that she could have said in that case that, that maybe would have changed that outcome but um, no they just didn't like where it was going and, and who knows maybe they didn't have i mean who knows if with whatever with rick or but they just want to blame it they just because it then right. it just feels like i don't have to accept blame it can be her fault and yep you can move on guilt-free which is what the majority of people in life for years want to do <laughs> not accept responsibility that's not yeah so 
I think, like we said, the biggest thing is just creating value and goodwill in every conversation. And I do think so many people are just so overwhelmed by messaging. I mean, you can't even probably imagine like if they go on real estate websites, how many emails they're receiving on a daily basis all of a sudden. Like, it's like, you know, when you go to a store and then you have to give them your email. And even if you uncheck, like, I don't want your stuff. And then all of a sudden you start getting things and that's overwhelming. So you can imagine like all these houses and people and people trying to call you and it just starts to feel like really terrible. So again, if you can just be that peaceful person that listens and is just, you know, there to take them to the next point. And I think is that, you know, breakthrough is just to kind of entertain, inform, delight, listen, just kind of, um, they're high priority. They're highly valued. I mean, it's just really simplistic things that a lot of people don't do that makes you uh, win. I remember even in the recession, uh, I, 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 I had so many years of success and they would say I was the only person out of six people that came out that said like, you know what? I think we can sell your house. Like it's going to be tough, but you know what? I, I know we can. It just depends on if you're going to want to do what it takes. And, and they said they couldn't even believe I got so much business by just saying that versus the majority of people came on and were like, oh, the market's terrible. Like, you don't want to sell your house. It's like, well, they, well, they did. <laughs> and nobody believed that it was even possible. So even just belief that it's possible is sometimes as like simple as it can be just to, just to believe that they can do it, you know? Well, if you, for those others, you know, they probably, they didn't want to set the expectations too high because in their mind, they, they, it was difficult. And, you know, if they yeah. failed, then they set the expectation pretty low, right? Um, but that's that's easier than actually, you know, saying you can do something or being, having confidence that you can accomplish something. And then, like I said, are we going to do what it takes to do that? That's the only question. Like you said, in the recession, things still sold. It was just, were you willing to do what it takes to sell it, Did, you know? Yeah. And even if it's multiple offers, even if we're in a low inventory and even if it's, uh, you know, they could meet with someone who's like, oh, it's going to be really hard. You know, there's like, you might have to write like eight offers. I don't know if you're going to get something. It's going to be really challenging. Like, wow, that's exciting. Like, I want to work with that person <laughs> versus right. like, even if you say like, I know we can do it. Like, I believe yeah. we can. If you really want a house, like, I know we can make it happen. It may take some time or some patience, or we may have to do things that you don't feel comfortable with right up front, but they make sense. But like, we can get there. I know I can, because we do know that if they listen or if they take advice, like it can be done. You can find the house for everyone. They have to be willing to adjust their expectations or what they're willing to pay or what offer they're trying to write. But it, it isn't that it can't be done. And that's who they want to work with is someone who believes in them and in the process, not somebody who's setting the tone up front of like, Oof, yep. I don't know. <laughs> Can you imagine if you went and did something, you're like, I'm really looking for this. And somebody said, uh, this car and they're like, I don't know if I can do it. I don't know if I can find that. And somebody else is like, Hey, I know it's gonna be really tough, but I think I could locate one for you. I mean, which person are you going to work with, right? Right. Yep. So um, communicate with their preferred method, which is kind of, we've talked about that listening skills, just getting beyond that surface chatter, which is what it sounds like Peter did an excellent job at is just getting below. He had a, he, right. He had to tell a story and then getting below that to see what it was that needs analysis, right? Like establishing then what does he need? What's that next step? Is there something that he's, this person's afraid of? Um, getting into agreement and then kind of tie it to like a next logical step or a solution or how you can help. Um, bomb bomb videos are great. Like I said, in the Zillow tips too, just sending that face to face, like, Oh, it's a human being. And they look like, I mean, look like a nice person. I think, I think everyone on the team looks like a nice person. I don't think there's anything <laughs> that looks scary. <laughs> um, texting after phone call. Like I even have an appointment today at four o'clock with like a big developer. And again, I, even I, I saw that they accepted, but I just even again emailed this morning and said, I'm really looking forward to meeting at four o'clock today. Is there anything I can do to prepare that would be helpful to you? Can I bring any information? But no matter what, it's just always that that follow up. Um, does anyone, and I know it's there, but remember the relationship portfolio stats? How many people to one transaction? It's either one to nine or one to 10. I feel like I've seen it both ways. One to 10. One to 10 right now. And then how about um, the internet? Like at the time, it's probably on the board behind you. You guys, you remember what their internet conversion is? It's like 
It's like 8%? Yeah, 8% for both, you know, live and the um, email. Mm -hmm. So at the time, and then, um, you know, you can do networking if you like any groups or anything you want to be involved in. The open houses we talked about, it's 45% last year conversion of those that you talk to. I mean, if you don't have a conversation with them, it's kind of hard to convert somebody. And then cold calling is 150 to about, if you're good, like 200 to one. So you just take the phone book and if you just call 200 people, you're, you're going to find one that's going to do something. I know, right? I was like, I never did that either. Sean Bariska is an agent in our market who's one of the top producers and he did. He was a door knocker and a phone. He, he did not mind the phone. And that's, those are the two ways he built his business is by door knocking and the phone. Cause he's a numbers guy and he just knew it was, he was cold and calculated and that's seriously how it comes across as cold and calculated. But he just knew that if he just made phone calls, he'd find somebody never was that person. But I would think the door knocking stats would be way better than the cold call stats. Oh, though. they are. I'm just talking about like, right. I don't know, I don't even though you could, you, you have to walk, so you can't hit as many in an hour, maybe. But anybody you talk to and that is willing to convert with you, you're face to face. Yeah. So your chances of them liking you, I feel like, are decent. And you've shown oh. some initiative. Like, I think there's just, there's a lot of, there's the people that'll just hate people coming to their door no matter what. But I think for a lot of people, they recognize that it's showing initiative and that it's your time and you can express that you care and i bought a kirby vacuum i have bought a cutco knives because i am totally one of those like when they come in and do the whole presentation i think i just kind of like like just what they're doing and how it hard it is but yeah it works i think it does so so then there's a bunch of exercises so there's if you can you know shadow some lead generation there's kind of a 30-day call plan um even if you guys i know you guys are already having that like even if your intention is how do you want to get through your 399 or what is your plan to get through your people um you know there, it says exercise three was a form that you use just to try it was a, we used to have people do it just for one week just to understand like how to track your phone text conversations but we have sisu now so we don't have to do that Actually, i'm just going to take that off right now Use. Just gonna do a second. Sorry. Sisu is still trying to figure me out, but um, once they figure me out, my stats are gonna just blow up. Blow up. Let's see the weekly accountability form. That's gone. I gotta fix this. Bleep bleep. Cause it's Sisu. Nice. Um. And then the script certification, which you both have done, right, already? Because that's something that kind of happens in the first 30 days now Now that we waited this. Are you, Matt, you have that? Petra, have you done that with Marsha? All we, those? I feel like we talked through it all, but I don't know that we did it in the same detail as if I'd been brand new. Okay, and then both of you, it's just a qualifying conversation being prepared. So look through those. There's a few things. If you have questions or anything that you're like, what in the heck is this? Um, Okay, any questions or a big takeaway today? I'm just gonna keep, I'm gonna be pushing towards getting consistent on two hours. My goal during the week is two hours for four days. Mm -hmm. And then on the weekend, it's gonna depend, but I've been, re I've been tr doing one or two sessions of, especially the Zillow on the weekend. Okay, got it. Matt? I guess my plan would be to start having those RP conversations with family and, and friends, people, close ones, and then um, making a plan for getting through the rest. Uh, I'm gonna, uh, so talking with Bree about maybe putting something together and, and uh, just go walk through the neighborhood someday and at least coming up with a plan to do that. Yes, it's good to get in these habits now when you have time because you have the time and then when it becomes a habit and you see like it's a good thing, you're likely to continue it. And when life gets a little more busy, like Jonah kind of got in at a weird time where 
people are leaving. Everyone was busy. He just sucked up all of his Zillow and got himself really busy and then never really established some of these things. And it's really hard to go back and do them because then it just starts to be like, I'm just going to do this, but it's good to go out and see, wow, I can like earn business in other ways than just, you know, waiting for the Mm -hmm. phone to ring. It's empowering. And sometimes it's kind of, you just got to go at it with it. It's like a learning, it's a growth thing. It's a skill thing. You're learning. I mean, you just, going to get so much out of it um, by practicing in the long run. And then it just makes you more effective when you get those calls. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. I'll see you next week, Matt. I'll see you tomorrow night. Where are you getting super dressy? I, I heard some people, quite a few people are like really dressy. I will choose from the dressies, the dressy dresses in my closet. I'm not buying anything. You have dressy dressies? I don't have dressy dressies. Well, not extremely. I'm just saying like, from what I have, I will choose something and <laughs> I will remember what I wore to the last event and not wear that. Um, you can wear it. I wouldn't even remember. I don't even remember. It's true, but I mean, yeah. I have a red dress and a black dress that I'll probably be choosing from. It's a short answer, but yeah. Okay. I'll see you tomorrow night. Bye. I love that. Bye. I, that I like that. Okay. <laughs> Bye guys. Mm-hmm.